gunmen storming the beach, people literally running for their lives. Those gunmen running onto the resort property. This all took place about 2.30 local times. Over the past 20 years, over 2 million people have been killed as cartels have made billions. Sunshine, picturesque beaches, and unbound entertainment, Mexico attracts thousands of tourists every week for its natural beauty and amazing hospitality. People come here to unwind and make memories. And those are also the reasons behind 23-year-old Benjamin Gaiman's Mexico tour in May 2023. But what was supposed to be a joyful trip ended up being a nightmare for the young athlete. Benjamin didn't know that this would be his last ever trip on this earth. So what happened on that fateful day in May how did Benjamin Gamond lose his life on a vacation? Who was so disparate to see him gone? And most importantly, is the perpetrator behind bars now? Stay tuned as we uncover these details and much more in this video. This is the story of Benjamin Gamond, the young athlete who lost his life while vacationing in Mexico. Benjamin Gamond was an Argentine citizen hailing from Córdoba and the youngest of eight siblings. He was a rugby player for Club Tala in Argentina. Just like any other 23-year-olds, Benjamin visited Mexico with his friends to relax and enjoy a little. He also had plans to work as a waiter, like he'd previously done once during the tourist season. He worked at Tulum for some time. After he had earned a significant amount, he traveled to Oaxaca with his friend Santiago Lastra and his girlfriend, Macarena Gonzalez. On May 11th, the trio visited Chacawa Island, they met a man called Cruz Irving Martinez Flores on the boat that took them to the island. Martinez told them that he was a surf instructor and they could contact him if they wanted to participate in water sports. He also told them that he was a local and could help them whenever they needed. When they arrived on the island, he told them he was from there and that whatever they needed, he would be around the coast. Benjamin and his friends took note. They completed their tour and went back for the day. According to Macarena's mother, Fernanda Carina Gonzalez, the next day, when the trio went to eat at a restaurant, Benjamin noticed Martinez roaming about at around two in the afternoon. He approached him and asked where he could buy surfboards, but Martinez looked appalled and acted as if he was talking to a stranger. The guy looked at him angrily, as if he didn't know him, Fernanda said. The trio left the restaurant after some time. Suddenly, Martinez charged forward toward them like a madman, he was holding a machete which he used on Benjamin's head and face while screaming incoherent words that didn't make sense. The only thing he said to him was, they sent you, they sent you. Macarena tried to stop Martinez and he attacked her as well. She received deep slashes on her back. Then Maca threw herself at him to prevent further attacks and that's when he also attacked her. Macarena ran away to get help. Martinez then turned to Santiago and attacked him. He sustained wounds in his arm and fractured his wrist. Onlookers were baffled and tended to Benjamin while help arrived. The trio was immediately provided medical care and sent to a hospital. The area was comparatively safer than other parts of Mexico, and an incident like this shocked everyone. As evident in Macarena's father's statement, the paramedics couldn't believe it. They couldn't understand how something like this could happen. In that place, people sleep with their doors open. It's incredibly idyllic and peaceful. The Oaxaca prosecutor's office took charge of the case. They hoped for Benjamin's recovery. After providing necessary medical care, Benjamin was moved to a bigger facility on May 14, 2023. The transfer was arranged by the Mexican Health Secretariat in a Mexican Navy ambulance plane. But despite all efforts, he passed away the following day. He was transferred to Mexico City, where he died this Monday afternoon as a result of the injuries inflicted. The prosecutor's office said in a statement, according to medical reports, Benjamin had sustained severe injuries in his heat and neck which caused a fractured skull and hypovolemic shock, and these were possible reasons for his demise. His friends Santiago and Macarena were out of danger. At this point, everyone had the same questions. Why did Martinez attack Benjamin? What was his motive? And why did he attack a man he had met one day earlier? Mexico's strong ties with narcotics trafficking gangs, cartels, and guns are not new. The locals and authorities have battled these for the past few decades, but the popular tourist locations remained untouched. However, recent incidents prove that tourists are also at risk of getting mugged, abducted, or in worse cases, 
eliminated. Just this week, police reported gunmen on jet skis showed up in the heart of Cancun's hotel zone, opening fire as frightened tourists ran for cover. Mexican authorities have deployed as many as 1,500 National Guards in popular tourist locations in Cancun to minimize the attacks. But the question remains, what made the attacks skyrocket? The reason might shock you. Investigation revealed that tourists might not be the prime targets of these attackers at all. Experts say in most of these attacks, tourists are not the intended target. Instead, cartel disputes are now permeating tourist areas. But why would cartels engage in a clash in popular tourist areas when they have their own territories away from all the hubbub? The experts have an answer to it as well. Those disputes are fueled in part by the increased demand for drugs, thanks in part to an increase in tourism. Others blame the violence on poor policing in the area. It's ironic that the tourists themselves are the reason for the violence which leads them to their tragic ends. Experts have asked tourists to stay in big hotel chains with an established name. They tend to have strong security and the tourists won't face any danger. Alternatively, they asked tourists to sign up for the Smart Traveler Enrollment Programs. It's a free federal program that provides tourists with resources if they face any troubles during vacations. The reason for their concerns is absolutely justified. Tourists have recently been through horrible experiences in Mexico. Some even lost their lives just because they were at the wrong place at the wrong time. One story that shook the world was of Dustin Jackson. He visited Cancun in February 2023 to celebrate Valentine's Day. Just before their flight home to Salt Lake City, Dustin decided to get some chewing tobacco. He didn't find it in the airport shops, so he called a cab and visited the local gas station. But they didn't have it either. Dustin's cab driver asked if he could take him elsewhere. He told him he knew of a shop where Dustin could certainly find the product. As Dustin entered the shop, the driver took him to. He was abducted. The driver hammered his head and he lost consciousness. He woke up hours later severely wounded and mugged. He says there's gonna be, it's just a grocery store. So I get out and I'm like, okay, as I'm walking in, then boom, lights up. Next thing I know, I am waking up in a ditch. The abductor had tried to slash the tendons of his hands and foot so that he wouldn't make it alive. And even if he did, he couldn't move or walk. Moreover, he had tried to hack off his foot. They filleted off the entire bottom of my foot. So they like went to cut my Achilles tendon and they missed. And instead of hitting it, they hit the bottom of the foot and just then my foot just flapped around. Dustin gathered all his energy and crawled in the streets, asking for help from pedestrians. But no one helped him. Even some officers refused to help. He was about to give up when he remembered his family, and he knew that he had to fight back. Because at this point, this is when, however long I was laying there, um, pretty much just waiting to die, something inside of me, that strength came to me and said, hey, you got family, you got kids. Get up. A female police officer saw him and decided to help him. She drove him to the airport. Dustin began a new struggle there. Everyone was minding their own business and no one wanted to help him. But finally, he managed to speak to a fellow traveler who had her flight canceled. Dustin's story touched her heart and she made a call to his wife. She sent Dustin some money and the lady bought him flight tickets to the US and also checked him into the hotel. Dustin Jackson finally arrived home he went to the hospital for his treatment immediately, where he had to undergo multiple surgeries. One of his shoulders is completely damaged, and he might never be able to throw anything with that hand. Dustin is now vocal about his experience in Mexico. He is planning to educate tourists about the dangers in Mexico and wants to turn his story into a documentary. He aims to collect enough money through crowdfunding to begin the project. Another similar incident took place in October 2021. A San Jose-based travel vlogger and engineer named Angeli Riot visited Tulum, Mexico to celebrate her 30th birthday with her husband. She posted multiple pictures of her vacation on her Instagram account after she arrived in Mexico. On October 20th, the day of the incident, Angeli went to the popular La Malcarita restaurant to have dinner. After completing her meal, she sat on the terrace for chit-chat with fellow travelers. At 10.30 in the evening, a man rushed into the restaurant as if trying to hide from some. Four armed men followed him inside, and they opened fire at a table. The guests scrambled. Anjali was sitting at a nearby table, and a few bullets hit her and another German woman. 
she lost her life on the spot. Video captured moments after the shooting appears to show a woman lying on the ground as others gather around to help. Shortly after, an ambulance arrives. The German woman was taken to hospital, where she passed away the following day. Three other people were wounded during the gun firing. They were of Dutch and German nationality. The German Foreign Office is sued an urgent travel advisory for German tourists right after the incident. If you are currently in the Tulum or Playa del Carmen area, do not leave your secured hotel facilities. Authorities conducted an investigation and identified the men engaged in the gun battle. They belonged to two notorious cartels that ran the street narcotic sales in Tulum, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, or the CJNG and the Los Polones Cartel, which is a wing of the Gulf Cartel. Anjali Rayot didn't have any relation to the cartels, but she had to lose her life over their petty brawl. Not only this incident, there have been many more attacks on tourists at popular travel destinations between 2018 and 2023. In April 2023, Mexican authorities found four bodies at a resort in Cancun. That shooting happened just behind the beach here, uh, on the beach behind me. This is one of the most popular tourist trips in all of Cancun. Dozens of hotels and resorts right now packed with tourists on spring break. David Gregorian was vacationing at the Fiesta Americana Condesa Hotel. The incident took place near his hotel. He was strolling outside the beautiful resort with his family when he heard the noise of bullets being fired. He initially dismissed them as construction sounds. Immediate thing that kind of caused us to like stop in our tracks was just a series of consistent gunshots. So just pop, 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 pop. So we immediately like turned around and uh, tried to go away from it. The most alarming part, according to David, was that a majority of the tourists present in that area didn't have a clue about what was going on. There was no way to alert them or communicate the incidents. There was no announcements. There's no phone calls. There's no alerts. There's nothing to alert people that something had happened. This could jeopardize more lives. Authorities uncovered the four bodies near the resort. They couldn't identify the victims, but they launched an investigation to track their family members. However, they identified the person behind the attack and announced a heavy bounty in exchange for information on his whereabouts. The state offered a $50,000 reward for Flores Aceves on Tuesday, saying he was involved in the killings. But it was the same reward offered for his arrest since a series of attacks and killings at bars in Cancun in May 2022. Officials said Flores Aceves also goes by the nicknames L15 and Ray, Albert King. Earlier in March 2023, a U.S. tourist took a bullet in his leg while vacationing on Mexico's Caribbean coast. The incident took place at Puerto Morelos, just south of Cancun. According to reports, the victim was approached by several suspects who unceremoniously fired at him and fled the scene. Authorities were not sure about their motive. The victim was taken to the hospital. His wound wasn't life-threatening, and he survived the attack without major physical damage. Mexico's Caribbean coast is notorious for gun battles. Earlier in January 2022, a gunfight in a resort in Playa del Carmen ended up claiming the lives of two Canadians and wounded one. This unverified video purports to show the chaos after the shooting at Hotel Xcaret that left two Canadians dead and one wounded, according to Mexican authorities. The reason for the attack? An argument between two tourists. The shooting happened after an argument between the guests. This is the hotel guest responsible for the shooting. The authorities posted the pictures of the attacker on social media and asked the public to help identify and locate him. These incidents are on the rise. There is at least one piece of news every month of a tourist getting wounded or unalived in one of Mexican hotels or resorts. And the number of these unfortunate events is a wake-up call for the authorities. Local police apprehended Martinez on Wednesday, 17th of May, 2023. He was charged with aggravated homicide and was scheduled to appear before a jury in the following days. Reporters captured the last moments before Martinez was taken inside court for his hearing, where he would receive his sentence. The authorities tried to get him maximum sanction. Martinez Flores was originally from Ometepec, state of Guerrero, and wasn't even a local at Oaxaca. The motive of the attack is still unknown. However, he is believed to be mentally unstable and supposedly had associations with cartels before. The initial investigation also included narcotics abuse as a possible reason for the attack. Martinez was perhaps under the influence of substances, which prompted him to launch an attack on Benjamin and his friends for no apparent reason. 
However, the suspicion was never confirmed. According to local authorities, Martinez was transferred to the high security prison of Mia Huatlan de Porfirio Diaz, which can house 2,500 inmates. The prison is usually home to the most dangerous narcotics traffickers in Ciudad Juarez. Benjamin's family remembered him as a beautiful, kind, humble, and friendly guy. The official statement released by his brother Facundo after Benjamin's demise showed how deeply they were affected and how much they had hoped for him to survive. The Gamond family reports, with immense sadness, that Benja didn't make it, the miracle didn't happen, the efforts, as his strength and heart, were enormous, but they weren't enough. Facundo also posted a picture on his Instagram account with a heartwarming caption, Thank you for waiting for me. Fly high, Torito. We shall meet again. We love you. His club was also devastated by the unprecedented loss of their star player. With deep sorrow, we inform that minutes ago, our dear Benja Gamond passed away. The statement read, We embrace and accompany his mother, his brothers, and all his family, his friends, and all the black and white community in this very sad moment. Benjamin's girlfriend, Carmela Martinez, also posted a photo on her Instagram as a last tribute to her beloved. It portrayed the two lovers in an intimate embrace at the beach. The picture evoked raw emotions, just like her caption did. Hello, Tarzan. Thank you for so much love. I love you, now and for a thousand more lives, she wrote. The news gathered international attention, and netizens couldn't help but pay condolences to the family of this innocent soul. Some people left warm comments under Carmela's post. Big hug. He will always be your angel. Unfortunate the way everything happened. Rip to him, and may you find comfort and peace. His family held a small memorial, which was attended by his family, friends, and well-wishers. They laid flowers beneath his picture and prayed for him. His rugby club also held a small gathering as a tribute. Attendees took the stage to speak of his achievements and remember his legacy. Benjamin's Instagram account had more than 5,000 followers, some of them possibly his fans. The account has since been deactivated, but his friends, family, and fans would certainly miss him. In a generous gesture, Benjamin's family decided to donate his organs in the hopes that they would help save a few more lives. La familia decidió donar sus órganos, por lo que personal del Hospital General de México, Dr. Eduardo Liceaga, le rindió un homenaje. The hospital staff applauded as they wheeled Benjamin away. Benjamin's brother confirmed that they had donated his kidney, liver, and cornea tissues already, and were looking for a suitable recipient for the heart and lungs. After his cremation, his ashes were scattered in the mountains of Córdoba, Benjamin's favorite travel destination. Mexico's growing violence has become an alarming issue for the country. The authorities claim that they're doing as much as they can to prevent the attacks, but the recent onslaught on tourists say otherwise. So, what is the government doing to prevent these incidents? Mexico's president, Andres Manuel López Obrador, has been receiving criticism since the beginning of his tenure for his inaction against Mexican narcotics cartels. These cartels are the pioneers of all violence in the country. Add to the 27,478 homicides nationwide since President Andres Manuel López Obrador entered office. The public claimed that many civilians, as well as law enforcement officers, were meeting a tragic end because the officers weren't well trained to fight cartels or organized criminals. You sent innocent people to their deaths. Why didn't you train them to defend themselves? These boys were 18 and 19 years old. Now they're dead. While the big cartels might not be involved in many of these isolated incidents and random attacks on tourists, it goes beyond saying that they paved the way for these small criminals to attack and abduct innocent tourists without worrying about the consequences. In a national public security poll conducted by the government in the summer, more than 70% of people say they consider the city they live in unsafe. The president acknowledged the ongoing unrest. However, he noted that the authorities were alert and already looking for ways to contain it. There's a lack of peace in the country, but we will achieve it. However, there is momentum behind this problem. It was allowed to grow for far too long, but we will find a way to resolve it. The United States is the biggest victim of cartel violence and trafficking. Being closest to Mexico, its population is at prime risk of consuming narcotics that are easily smuggled within borders by Mexican cartels. 
At the same time, many U.S. tourists readily lose their lives or get wounded when they visit Mexico for vacations. Reports claim that around 550 U.S. citizens are missing in Mexico, and no one knows if they will ever return home. Mexico is also an extremely popular tourist destination for U.S. citizens, and the number of tourists visiting the country is growing every day. Passenger volume between the U.S. and Mexico this January, January 2023, actually up 24 percent compared to the same month in 2019. That's more uh, a larger rise than any other international destination. Mexico is a true favorite of American tours. To prevent their people from dying during vacations, the U.S. State Department issued a travel advisory in the summer of 2023. State Department heightening its warning to Americans traveling to Mexico where violent crimes are on the rise, even in tourist destinations. Tourists were advised to remain cautious when traveling in Cancun and Cabo and reconsider visiting popular tourist destinations such as Puerto Vallarta. The State Department put a do not travel advisory on six Mexican states, Tamaulipas, Zacatecas, Sinaloa, Colima, Guerrero, and Michoacan. Travel advisory for uh, Tamaulipas State remains at level four. Do not travel. Uh, we encourage Americans to heed that, heed that advice. Despite all efforts, the death toll continues to rise. So naturally, U.S. authorities are ready to help Mexico to prevent these attacks and assist them in battling narcotics production and distribution. They already capture traffickers and confiscate consignments at borders and also chase down narco lords whenever they can. However, in a statement made in 2023, Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador claimed that he wouldn't allow any foreign authority to intervene in matters of their country. No vamos a permitir que intervenga ningún gobierno extranjero y mucho menos que intervengan fuerzas armadas. His words sounded almost threatening when he mentioned that the world must change its treatment of Mexico from that day onwards. He urged the U.S. authorities to start an information campaign to educate all their countrymen of this aggression by Republicans. He also warned that failing to do so would lead to losing Mexican or Hispanic votes in the U.S. election. He also mentioned going to the U.N. if the matter went out of hand. During another interview in 2023, the president revealed shocking information. When a journalist asked him whether it was true that he was considering associating with cartels to bring a balance to society, the president replied that it could be a possibility. I agree. Hopefully, peace can be reached. It's what we all want, an end to the violence. But can he really bring peace to the lands of Mexico once again? Is befriending a criminal organization a wise move? Will innocents like Benjamin continue to die before the authorities finally decide to wake up and take control of the situation? Only time will tell. What did you think of the brutal way Benjamin Gamond had to lose his life? Do you think the incident could have been avoided? Do you believe that law enforcement in Mexico is doing enough to prevent these attacks? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.